Well, good day, everybody. Today, we're going to take a look at how to pack this awesome Duluth Portage Pack that I showed you guys last Sunday. Now, there's some nuances about this style of pack that we have to take in consideration because the Duluth style canoe or portage pack was specifically designed to take on portages. All right, I'm going to get into, you know, the thought behind this and how I packed it, why I packed the way I did it and things like that. And there's going to be a follow up video that's going to tag on to this because of the style of camping that you're doing when you go portaging, at least the style of camping you probably should be doing in all honesty. So last week, we talked about this pack, we broke it down, not literally, but figuratively, we showed you all the nuances about it and what makes this a really high quality piece of equipment that's not going to let you down when you're out in the woods or out in the rivers or out in the lakes and things like that. Now this pack is very large and its purpose was intended to get you from point A of water over a strip of land, the portage, to another point, point B, a new body of water, to carry on. Those are portages. Okay, so you got your canoe. That's kind of what we're looking at. Your canoe is going to be your car and that's going to be your main mode of transportation. But between those bodies of water, you got to use the good old fashioned legs, if you know what I mean. All right, now before we get dive into it, I always want to say thank you to my patrons on Patreon because without them, this channel would not have gone where it's gone and where it's going. So thank you if you are one of my patrons on Patreon. If you are able and willing to give, you know, every little bit helps. We really appreciate it. It all goes back into funding, especially right now the podcast that we started because there's uh, monthly subscription fees and things like that. So uh, we really appreciate you. Now, this bag here is called an envelope style portage pack. Now they're, they make these very similarly today, but because of the differences in equipment that we have today, uh, there, there's some slight changes to it. Now, if you're a modern camper, in honesty, I would probably suggest that you go with a more modern Duluth Portage pack. And because of how the new construction is, it, it's more, it's, it's easier. It's easier to pack it with contemporary gear. When I arranged everything in this particular bag, it was for a two-person trip. You know, in scouting, you always have a buddy. And when you go out in the wilderness, especially far away from society and from safety and civilization, you really should go with one other person. That's just good advice, right? If you are determined to go alone, there's a tremendous amount of risk that's involved. Um, this pack and what I'm talking about and how I'm showing you is for a two-person camping trip, okay? And you know, having someone else to help carry the weight is never a bad thing. So we're going to go ahead and open it up. I'm going to lay out everything on the table and I'm going to show you how I pack this and the different things I carry. Now season determines everything when you go out on whatever outdoor adventure that you go on right? Now I pack this for probably mid-June, maybe late June and into the summer. This is not a spring loadout by any means because if this was a spring loadout, honestly, I'd probably have another blanket. I'd probably have my coat stuffed in there, things like that. So if you're thinking about doing a winter canoe trip or maybe uh, early spring canoe trip, then you know, you got to add things to it based off of the time of year that you're going and the weather that you're probably expecting. Now, the first thing here is my wool blanket. This is a five pound, 100% wool blanket. It's a Civil War reproduction blanket that's uh, really well done. It's pretty nice. It's rather large, so I can roll myself up in it along with my other layers. Um, next to a fire, I'd probably be perfectly fine for late spring and into the summer. So, uh, and also, I'd probably have another rubber blanket on top of this to keep it waterproof. I couldn't find my other rubber blanket. So this is what we're doing. So we, I always roll these up. Now, reason why you roll it up instead of fold it or uh, have rectangles, because if you roll it up, it's easier to put in and pull out as needed. But it also takes a little bit less space, just a little, little bit. 
So I want to stuff that on one side of my pack. In this situation, it's the ones toward me. The next thing is my shelter. Now my shelter, which I guess I could have exchanged this kind of think of it, put the rubber blanket on my wool blanket. When I did this, I, I was trying to find my two rubber blankets. So I have a full shelter. So two shelter halves in this and covered up with one of my rubber blankets. And it's all rolled up. I'm gonna put that on the other side. Next, having dry sacks or separate bags to keep things organized is gonna be a huge benefit to however you pack, right? It could just be a weekend pack when you go on locally. But what I have here, and this is my, uh, this is my uh, Spanish American War haversack, the Boy Scout style, so I can use it as a backpack. I kept the straps on there. Because what's nice, if you go on a smaller excursion, maybe you're foraging or just going on a little day hike from base camp, having something like this is pretty handy. So I have all my extra clothing in here. I've got an extra shirt. I got long johns. I have two pairs of socks. I have an uh, extra pair of pants. And double check. I don't remember what else. Oh, and my cold weather clothing, like a scarf my gloves, I have my wool liner gloves, my leather gloves, I have my beanie hat, which is really important to keep the heat in, especially in the cooler evening, and I have an extra uh, pillowcase in there that I can use as a stuff sack if need be, or something else. So, so I have my clothing bag, and it literally takes up everything in here. I'm gonna put that down towards the bottom, smack dab in the middle. Now the nice thing about these being softer items that are going to be lower essentially to my back, they're also heavier duty items that's lower to my back. Uh, the, the five pound blanket and the tent, they're kind of keeping me balanced on both sides. Uh, that's also going to be comfortable on my back since there's no frame on this style of bag. Next thing is a Indian Wars haversack. <laughs> that I have here that I'm using as a second dry sack. Now inside this bag is all my kits. So I have my hygiene kit, I have my fire kit, I have uh, my repair kit. I also have three of these hand warmers, which are really nice. Now, when I was a scout, I went up to the Boundary Waters uh, Northern Tier, Minnesota. And this was at the beginning of June. It's like right after school let out. Now for the most part, it was fairly warm weather, but there are multiple times where it got kind of chilly. I don't think it got down to, to freezing temperatures, but it got down to the 40s and uh, it was kind of cold. So having hand warmers, especially in the situation if you do get wet, you know, hypothermia, especially around water or something, you have to take in consideration. So I could light one of these up and I got three of them in this bag. I could light them all up and I could put them in different places on my body and they're going to give me heat. Okay, so having hand warmers like that, even if it's like the contemporary hot hand hand warmers, it's going to be really important to put for your emergency kit. And I also have, just because I like having coffee when I go on my little hikes and stuff, I have my personal coffee kit right here. I have a tin of coffee, I have a tin of sugar, I have a little tin of creamer, and I also have my cocoa in here, so I could make some hot cocoa if need be. So this is my all-in-one coffee kit, right there, nice little bag. And that's towards the top, because I'm probably not gonna need the other stuff until I settle in camp. Now that is gonna go directly on top with the softer side, towards the back. All right, next. Now we're gonna fill out the bellows portion. So we gotta think about what we're gonna to need to get to right away. This is a complete first aid kit, not just a personal first aid kit. Now the reason why I'm opting for a larger first aid kit is because you're gonna be out in the wilderness. You're gonna be far away from civilization. You may have to wait for quite a while to get some help, right? So we have a larger first aid kit that's more comprehensive, has a lot more things in here to treat more serious injuries. 
So I have my larger first aid kit, and it's going to go towards the top. It's not something that you want to try to dig for in case of an emergency. So I'll put that towards the top there. I have my vest here. Now my vest is a nice extra layer. So once it starts getting a little cooler, uh, midday, or maybe cloud starts coming because of rain, you know, I can throw on this outer layer of vest and it's gonna keep my core temperature warm. Now my arms might be a little colder or chilly or something like that, but this will keep my core a lot warmer. And then with all the extra pockets, I can load that down with the hand warmers if need be and stay warm as well. So that is gonna go on the other side. Now, this hatchet is actually going to go more towards the bottom because chances are I'm not going to need the hatchet until I get to base camp. So I'm going to stuff that all the way towards the bottom. Now with my rope, it's always a good idea to have rope that you can get to, but your chances are you're probably not going to need it right away. And since I have everything organized as it is in those bags, I don't have to worry about fumbling around. This is going to feel uh, just like rope. If I'm reaching in there, if it's darker or something, I can feel for this and know that it's rope. So that's another thing you need to think about when you're packing stuff is the tactile feel uh, in case you can't see. All right. Now, we got my tent poles. Now you could make your own tent poles, you could. But after a long day of canoeing, I, I've been in many a situation where packing tent poles really paid off because you're just so daggone tired. You don't want to do anything else. You just want to set up camp and finally relax. And because you have your canoe, which is doing most of your traveling for you, you know, having the extra weight of some tent poles to save you the time and energy pays off a lot. So I pack my tent poles and even though my ropes to my tent are actually already set on my tent, they're just coiled up nicely so I can just pull them out and uh, deploy my tent quickly. I always have an extra rope, you know, this is about, um, I think it's about 20 feet of rope that's coiled around the hair and tied up and everything. And it's a, it's a smaller diameter of rope. It will still hold a tremendous amount of weight. Plus I have my scout rope here in case I need to do anything that's a little bit more involved. All right, so we've got my rope. I'm gonna put that also towards the bottom. Now, along with that, you may want to take some tent pegs. Making tent pegs is a little less involved than making tent poles. So I ought to not to pack some tent pegs in here, but that's another good idea that you may want to consider. Now this is my rain gear. Now this is also a rubber blanket, so you might be thinking, well, there's your second rubber blanket. I actually have three. So this is what I'm going to use as my rain gear. And remember last week, there's a little pocket here that you can stow some of your quick to get to items. So it might be a first aid kit. My first aid kit is already up top. I know exactly where it is. I can pull it out and get to it. So I'm not going to use it for a smaller first aid kit. I'm going to use it for this, my rain gear, so I can set it right up in there. And I might, if I had a map case, I would use it for that. All right, so now we got that. And a shovel. Now, I told you at the beginning that this is going to be for a two-person canoe trip. And as you saw me packing some stuff, you might be thinking, well, where's the other guy's bag of personal items? Where's the other guy's bag of uh, clothing and stuff? You'll see that next week as we get into um, next week's bag, right? So a little bit of uh, foreshadowing. So what I opted for here is my small scout shovel. It's not necessary, but if you are out in the wilderness, you wanna make sure that your fires are contained. Some, and sometimes it can be difficult finding rocks or digging out trenches and things like that without a shovel. Also having a shovel is going to help you for making a cat hole, you know, for your human waste. It'll also help you to trench around your tent in case you're caught in a downpour. That's especially important 
for these older style tents because these older style tents that's why you're taking a rubber blanket for your ground cloth so if you trench around your tent it'll drive the rain that falls down on your tent into that trench away from you so then you're not sleeping in mud that's important so what we have here is we got our small little packable shovel shovel i want to put that right up on top so it doesn't damage my canvas it's going to be fairly out of the way cover it up and then i'll strap it down now even with all the stuff that i put in here there's actually more space so i could have food i could have more clothing i could have another blanket in here or something like that for the other person it just depends on what you're carrying um, what your partner's carrying and how you distribute the weight this goes back to the patrol method style of distributing weight in a patrol not everybody needs to carry a hatchet not everybody needs to carry a shovel not everybody needs to carry the majority of the food or cook kits or things like that so when you are going with someone else you get to split a lot of that communal gear and it makes things a lot easier now last week i showed you guys how this carried with just my shelter app and just my blanket. Well, now I'm gonna put this on and I'm gonna give you some feedback about the weight distribution. Of course, it's gonna be different because there's a lot more weight in it. So as we lift it up, you can see uh, how large it is. And I can tell you, it's probably got about 30 some pounds in it as is, um, it's, it's kind of heavy. I'm getting pretty close to being 40 pounds, which is like a bag of dog food. All right, now, again, like last week, it's not pinching at the sides. It's a lot more filled out. There's tr definitely a lot more weight on my shoulders, right? That makes sense. A lot of your modern bags will come with a sternum strap and will also come with a waist strap. Now the waist strap especially will help alleviate so much weight from your shoulders. Um, now the bag I had when I was a scout in Northern Tier. It was a billowed bag. So it was much larger, it was like a box type bag. Um, it was, I was like 16 when I went. It was taller than this one by a little bit. And it was just as wide as I recall, if my memory serves me right. But it's also um, as, as deep, as deep, it's, it's quite a bit. We carried everybody's gear in that. And of course, depending on the bag that you got, one was lighter, heavier, and things like that. But those bags were extremely heavy, were extremely awkward. This one, a little bit lighter, I think, and it's going to be fairly awkward going up the hills. But because of the weight distribution, I don't feel like my body is woo, leaning back unless, of course, I'm leaning this far. Once I start leaning this far up, just barely straight, I can feel it pulling on my back. But once I throw my butt out and I lean just a little bit, it's alleviated quite a bit because of that weight that's gonna be right here. So there you go. That's, uh, that's the bag. Now, what else would I carry? Obviously all the pocket trash that I'd normally carry on any other hike. I might carry a flashlight on my person if it's not stowed away in the bag like it is right now. Carry a pocket knife, carry my belt knife, uh, my pocket watch, an extra set of matches. Um, might be carrying a coat or a jacket on my person, but everything else, you know, besides stuff that you're going to immediately need, is gonna be in this bag. You're going to carry a canteen one way or the other. Now, it's because you're going out in the portage waters, you're already going to have water available. So you need some way of treating that water. That, that's, uh, that's pretty cool, right? Now, now, if you like this video, please click like. That way other people find it. We really appreciate it. And uh, towards the end of this video, I'm going to have a link to my other bags. And of course you can check that out um, you know, some other time. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. 
If you want to check out the video about the different packs, then check out this link here. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss hug to your loved ones, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.